About half a year ago, a viewer asked if I could do an overview video on all the hats and interfaces that are now part of the IoTT device family. I promised that I would do that once the Red Hat Shield was finalized. That is the case now and so it is time to provide a thorough overview on what you can do with all these IoTT devices. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. Welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everybody else. I am glad to see you. The last overview video I did was about two years ago with video number 59. It was titled Using the IoTT stick with your command control system. And this title already shows the core of the progress that has been made over the course of the last two years. As by now, with the addition of the Red Hat and DCCX, the IoTT stick evolved into a low-cost command station that provides all the goodies like Loconet, Wi-Fi integration for smartphones and tablets, and up to 2 times 5 amps track power, which actually is more than what you get from most mainstream systems on the market. So there is a lot to talk about and to make it easier, I am going to split the content into two videos. In this first video I give a quick overview on the purpose and main characteristics of each device that is part of the IoTT system. And in the next video I will have a closer look at the technical communication concepts used to make all these devices cooperating with each other. First from a technical point of view, so talking about the different protocols and their pros and cons, and then also from a logical point of view, so why and how is all the data used for controlling the layout. Of course, this will also lead into a short overview on current and future developments as not every function is already implemented. So, let's get started. What began about 5 years ago with a simple Loconet interface and MQTT gateway has become a product family with 4 types of devices. Interface boards, the IoTT stick microcontroller, several function heads and some additional support boards. Interface boards are used to connect to the layout and there are two different types, the DCC and the Loconet interface board. The DCC interface is connected to the track and it converts the DCC track signal to a voltage level that is healthy for a microcontroller. It uses optocouplers to make sure that no high DCC voltage or a different ground potential can cause harm to the connected microcontroller. The output side features a growth connector which can be used to connect the interface to the IoTT stick or to any other microcontroller, for example an Arduino, to decode the DCC signals. A common way to use it is connecting it to the IoTT stick where the DCC commands are decoded and displayed to see what commands are sent over the track. Or they can be used to drive output functions on a function hat, for example setting LEDs on a blue hat. The Loconet interface works the same way, only that it is not connected to the track but to a Loconet network. Also here, the output side is connected to the IoTT stick or another microcontroller which can decode and display the Loconet messages or operate input and output functions of a function hat like the green hat servo decoder. And of course, since Loconet offers two-way communication, the Loconet interface can not only read but also write Loconet messages. So it implements bidirectional information exchange with the network. Again, both boards can be connected to the IoTT stick or they can be used with other microcontrollers. They are quite, there are quite some viewers out there who use them with growth port cables with jumper pins on the one end to make connections to, for example, an Arduino controller using a breadboard so they can do their own experiments with DCC or Loconet messages. 
And yes, both interfaces work with microcontrollers using 5 or 3.3 volts supply voltage. The next device is the IoT T-Stick. Basically, it is an ESP32 microcontroller with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, packaged with a small OLED display, some buttons and a battery, including a battery management system. On each side there is a connector with some IO pins so that it can be connected to other devices. What is important is to understand the two sides of the IoT T-Stick. On the left side is the growth port, the 4 pin connector with 5 volts ground and 2 GPIO lines. On the IoT T-Stick this side is always used to connect to a data source, so either a Loconet interface or a DCC interface and maybe an LCC interface in the future. Looking at the IoT T-Stick setup screen, this is configured using the command source setting. You see the options DCC interface and Loconet interface. There are more command source options available, but those are all used for the different types of Wi-Fi connections I will explain in the next video. And then there is the right side or the function head side with the 8 pin head connector. It features 3 GPIO pins and 5 pins for power supply and battery. This side is always connected to the head connector of the function heads and is used to control the attached function head hardware. The IoT T-Stick software is configured based on the selected command source, selected function head and the activated communication servers and embedded function modules. And yes, it is all done on the configuration page. You do not have to load different programs depending on what function head you are using. Simply select the head type you want from the list in the configuration screen and the IoT T-Stick already knows how to treat it. The same is the case for the communication servers and the embedded function modules of the IoT T-Stick, which can be activated by simply checking the checkbox. At this point there is only one function module available, the event handler, which for example can be used to implement ABS or APB signaling, as I demonstrated in videos number 70, 71 and 72. The first device in the function head category is the brown head, which is a USB interface to connect the IoT T-Stick to a computer running software like JMRI, Digipad or similar. From the computer's point of view, it behaves like a Locobuffer USB, so every program that can connect via a Locobuffer USB can be used with the brown head. So, as shown in video number 106, you can take an IoT T-Stick, connect a Loconet interface on the left side and the brown head on the right side and you get a Loconet to USB interface and at the same time a white throttle server, a Loconet over TCP server and a Loconet to MQTT gateway. Features I will talk more about in the next video. Then there are three IO function heads called blue, yellow and green head. They provide some input and output functions. The blue head is used to drive a chain of WS2812 LEDs, so Neo pixels with onboard red, green and blue LED. The chain can be several hundred LEDs long and each LED can be programmed individually to display the status of turnouts, block detectors, signal aspects, analog values, input buttons, track power status and more. The original idea for the blue hat was to use it to drive multi-aspect signals, as shown in a series of videos starting with video number 13. But once the blue hat became available, viewers started to use it for all kind of illumination applications. On my test layout I use it to operate the 10 searchlight signals implementing a 3-aspect ABS system with searchlights displaying red, green and flashing yellow. 
The yellow hat was originally intended as a device to build do-it-yourself CTC panels as shown in video number 9. It therefore features an LED chain similar to the one on the blue hat, but it also has 32 input lines to connect buttons or potentiometers for analog values, for example to control the brightness of the signals for day and night settings. But beyond that it also works very well to connect block detectors, for example the MGP Sensor 8 diode I test tested in video 68. And the green hat is a 16 channel servo decoder used to control servos for turnouts and semaphore signals. It can control 16 servos and it also has two input lines per channel which can be used for local buttons or block detectors and two LEDs per channel which can be used for local turnout position indicators. Rotation angle and speed can be programmed for each servo individually. The movement characteristics can include overshooting, bounce back and hesitation, which makes it ideal to model semaphore signals where a typical signal hand has these oscillating effects when the position is reached. All three of these devices use an IOTT stick as the brain and the commands can be received from Loconet or from DCC. If input functions are used, for example buttons or block detectors, and the status information needs to be sent to another device, then of course Loconet communication is the way to go as it is bidirectional. Next in line is the black hat which was used to combine a physical knob with a smartphone so that the user can use the phone as a throttle but still has the real knob to control the speed of the train. I demonstrated that in video number 51 but never actually made a final design for it. But still, you can download all design information and build your own if you want. The software to support it is available in the IoTT stick. And then, added about a year ago and much more important, the purple hat, which is my first train side sensor, so a sensor that rides on the train and measures speed, slope, banking and traveled distance. It is used to automatically calibrate locomotives so that the scale speed of all locom locomotives in a fleet can be known for each throttle position and any two locomotives will go with the same speed for the same throttle setting. The last and newest function hat is the red hat shield, which comes in the form of an Arduino shield and can be ad added to the top of a DCCX Arduino stack to turn it into a Loconet command station. To make it work, the Red Hat combines a Loconet interface and a serial communication interface on the same board, so it uses both sides of the IoTT stick. Besides the communication with the DCC export, it provides three Loconet connectors, two of them Loconet T for throttles and one Loconet B to connect additional boosters as needed to power the layout. And on top it has the same type of LED support as the blue hat, so it can be used to illuminate signals or the LEDs of a CTC panel. Or both, if you like. Finally, let's have a look at the available support boards. The first one is the Power Shield board, another Arduino shield that provides 5 amps of drag current to the layout with a voltage of up to 25 volts depending on the DC supply that is used. It can be used standalone, either one or two boards, or in combination with the Arduino motor shield. In that case, the motor shield can be used as programming track, while the power shield provides the power to the main track. As shown in video number 107, the power shield is available in two versions, one with a built-in H-bridge module and the other with a ribbon cable to connect to an external IBT2 H-bridge module. And the second support board is a 3-channel level to pulse driver that can be used to send a current pulse with adjustable duration to bipolar switch drivers like snap switches or tortoises and similar devices. At the time I made it for use with the green hat for those cases where most turnouts are equipped with servos, 
but just two or three remain powered by a snap switch or stall motor. In those cases the level to pulse board can be used to convert the servo output of a green hat channel so that it can operate that switch and there is no need for an additional switch decoder. Now with DCCX it can also be used to convert an Arduino pin output to a turnout pulse so that any V pin of an Arduino command station can be used to operate standard snap switch or stall motor turnouts. And that sums up the hardware overview and as you see it starts to look like a command control system. Now of course to make it work all these devices need to communicate with each other and exchange command messages and status reports. The basic connection we have already seen each IoT stick can be equipped with a Loconet interface and the Loconet cable provides this communication function and allows the seamless integration of any device from other manufacturers that support the Loconet network. But there is more. Instead of using a Loconet cable, the entire communication can take place via Wi-Fi and over long distances even by using the internet. But that's what I'm going to show and explain in the next video. For today, that's it. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you now have a better understanding what all these boards can be used for. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. It's free and it tells YouTube to recommend this video to other model railroaders. So I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.